Hey y'all, hey y'all. So I'm out twerking today and I have a question, right? I always have a question. So I would like to know if there is someone or multiple someones who can give me information about working in the oil fields in Texas around the Odessa area. Um, companies that would hire someone with two or more years experience, um, what the work is like, what it entails, day to day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let me know. Thanks. Appreciate you. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Who can give me information about working in the oil fields in Texas? All right, we got Anonymous in the building. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Anonymous, you have been down in the oil fields. You reached out to me. You was like, yeah, I've been down there. Maybe I can help uh, answer this young lady's question. So you've been down in the oil fields for about a year, year and some change now. Yeah, yeah, about a year. Yes, yes. All right. So I'm going to give you the floor. I, you know, what, you know, what, what, what to expect? Uh, what I mean, you know, she, she wants to know, uh, was jobs down there? What to expect? You know, tell tell us what's going on. Tell you, tell us your experience. Uh, in the oil fields. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. The oil field has been great um, so far. Um, I'll go with pros and cons. I'll start with the pros. The pros is that um, the routes are usually shorter. Um, you're usually going between uh, 30 and uh, 80 miles out to get whatever you're getting, whether it be sand, salt water, or mud. Um, you're not actually, a lot of people think that you're hauling oil. You're not hauling oil. You, it's either it's sand, salt water, and mud. Those are the three things that I've had experience with. Um, you may be driving a, a tra have a trailer with two boxes on there or a trailer with one box, or a pneumatic trailer, or a tanker. Um, with the boxes, you'll have to get the tops open. Um, either you can open them, or uh, if they have like a long stick, you can, you can um, get out and open up on the top. You'll be trained on how to do that. Or it depends on which, which sand plant you go to, which plant you go to for the boxes. Some plants open them up for you. Those are all pros. Um, it's automated. Computers are involved. I mean, a, apps are involved. You can you scan your boxes. If they're boxes, you scan them. Um, and once you scan them, the bill of lading, everything is there. So all you got to do is fill in information on the weights of whatever whatever you're carrying. Um, this is with boxes. Um, and then you safely go back to your well and you wait for your vehicle, for your truck to be called. And when you go uh, get, get called to the well, it, it's unloaded by somebody else. So you're just sitting, you're driving up to the well and getting unloaded. And you're repeating that process several times a day. Right now, the, uh, the income... I mean, the, um, the pay has decreased in some places. In other places, it has increased. Louisiana has decreased a little bit. Oklahoma had increased, I had heard. Texas had some other stuff going on, too, due to the economy. But um, you can make the same type of money that you would make going over the road or even more um, if you're a driver and being an owner-op. I have seen owner-ops make up to like 10,000 a week. Um, and it's an easy 10,000. I've seen um, drivers make about 2,000 to 22, I mean, 2,000 to 22, 2,400 a week, depending on how many loads you get. Damn good coffee and hot. Now this is, now this is all owner ops. Uh, not companies that 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 you'll be that you'll be working for or how, how does that work is it 1099 it's a w2 or what it's a mixture everybody there are several companies i can name some of the companies for you um it's jrt conley um who else um 
I'm trying to think of other <laughs> JRT Conley um, 5F um, Philomar uh, Liberty. Those are those are the companies that um, either they're driving or they have a well. Liberty and Philomar are the ones that ha that are over that are over a lot of the wells, and um, you'll drive under them. You can drive under them as a company. And you can drive under them as an individual. It depends on, you know, what you plan on, you know, you know, what you what you plan on doing. If you're if you're an owner op that's over the road, you would probably go to one of those major companies and come in as an owner op there. If you're a truck driver and you wanna you don't want to deal with any owner op stuff, you just want to go drive, they have they have um um you know, spa those spaces too, where you can drive for them or you can drive under and on or out. Um, they have carriers under them. The big companies like Philomar and Liberty have carriers under them. You have to have five uh, trucks in order to be a carrier. If you got five trucks, you can go ahead and start your business and start in leasing other people. You can lease other folks up under you also, other, other owner ops under you and drivers. So it, it, it becomes very lucrative because if you get like 10000 a week on a truck, you, that's about 40000 That This is all gross. That's about 40000 for one truck. It's about 40000 for one truck. Now, right. this is when everything, the conditions. Now, I can go to the cons to let you know about the work, the conditions. Okay. I can go to the cons. The cons is over sat right now is oversaturation that's a big con because what what you made six months ago you probably are not gonna make it today because a lot of people who are over a lot of owner ops that were over the road have transitioned their business into the oil field so you are waiting to either get sand or you're waiting at the well to deliver sand that's a con because you're waiting can for one load can be anywhere from 12 to 16 hours. It depends on the amount of trucks that are there. I'm talking about at the well, it depends on the amount of trucks that are there that are there waiting. It depends on um, the conditions of the well. Um, they're going they're going over two miles or so below the earth's surface. So problems, things happen where that slows everything up. So um, you have issues with people jipping the line, you know, people stating that they're staged and they're not staged, you know, people staging before you stage, <laughs> you know, and they're behind you. So those are the cons um, um, with uh, being at the well, but at the sand plant, where you go or the plants where you go and pick up your product to deliver to, to the well that where there be different types of sand, you may have a line for a certain type of sand that you're hauling. And that line can be a five hour wait. So time and, and um, different silos may go down at the sand plants. Some sand plants are smaller. They may not have any sand and they're, they're getting their sand delivered on the end dump truck, you know, end dump trailer, truck with end dump trailer with full of sand. So all types of things like that. And then there's jipping in the line. Every, you know, people, sometimes people are honest, people are not honest. They'll try to jip lines and it causes confusion. That's a con. Another con is driver error, um, wasting sand. That's a con. Anytime you waste any of these products, it is a big fine that is in, that's involved. It is a fifteen hundred dollar fine some places if you drop sand on the on the scale or on the property. It is a fine if you make a mistake and roll off of the scale and drive off of the scale on the accident. You know, sometimes when you're steering, you're in a confined place. It's it's um it's uh you know. Not bumper to bumper, but it's it's across your front, the front end of your vehicle. The, the whole sides of your vehicle are closed in on the on the um, scale. If you make a mistake and drive off and got to get pulled off, get your wheel unstuck or something like that, that's going to be a cost. Hi, um, my name is Peter Parker, and I like a car.
coffee, please. Okay, no problem, Peter Parker. Um, other cons is just, um, you know, just basically time. Other cons is you're dealing with um, off-road conditions. You may be in the forest. Okay, you're in like the forest where, you know, animals and there is there are many ditches in there. The thing is that you got to keep your keep your all the, all the wheels on the flat surface. If you go to the left or to the right when you're passing someone, you can get stuck in mud. You'll you're um you could get stuck in a ditch. You can flip over. Those trailers are very easy to flip. If you're going too fast around a curve, you can flip over. Almost every well I have went to, there has been at least one flip over. Mm. Weather conditions will, can cause that, and your speed can cause that. Have you have you ever been stuck? Have have you yourself has, has, has been? Have you ever been stuck down there? Uh, no, I have not been stuck. All right, so glad I'm glad I haven't. Yeah. All right, so she also wants to know about uh about experience. Like she I'm I'm assuming when she says she got like 2 years of experience. So is there uh, a certain amount of experience that you need to come down to the oil fields? Yes. Usually it's a uh, 2 years experience. It maybe it depends on where you go. Um, it may be two years experience, but if you already have oil field experience, sometimes um, two whole years, it depends on the company. Depends on the company that you go to. Now that's now that's for a company. Now you you only had like you you came into the oil fields with less than two years. So was that because Yes, I did. Was that that's because, because you came with a uh, got with an owner operator or how did that work? I came in with a carrier that accepted. There are some carriers that accept brand new drivers, and they're very rare. There are some carriers that accept brand new drivers, and their insurance is very high. So all this is because of insurance purposes. All of it's insurance purposes. Yeah. All the, the two years. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a Swift would do, just like a Swift or a, or Western Express would accept somebody with no experience, it's the same way there. <clears throat> but you just you gotta find them because there's some companies are very strict on two years um, experience because of its insurance purposes. All yeah. right, and also um, I forgot one more thing in Texas, um, another con your lease roads. A lease road is the road that's leading up to the um, the well or the staging area. Because you go to staging first, and then you go to the well, unless they call you. So you stage first, and then you're called to the well. And that's where your weight is at the staging area. Um, some In Texas, the wells are exponentially bigger than they are in Louisiana. I think Oklahoma is probably about the same as Texas. So your lease road is at 10 miles per hour. And if you're, or yeah, 10 miles per hour. And if it is 30 minutes away, you will be driving 10 miles an hour all the way there. So it'll take you some time. Oh. If you got to go 26 miles at 10 miles an hour, you can just do the math and, you know. All right. It'll, it'll, take, it'll take 45 minutes to an hour to get there. And one more thing, one more pro I forgot. In Texas, the best thing to do is to be able to drive a manual truck. For some reason, in the oil field, manual manual trucks are popular. Having a manual. So a lot of companies may have mostly manuals. And it's best to know, you know how to drive those. 13 speed, 18 speed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Sorry, I forgot one more. The ELD, the thing about the ELD, you do not have to use an ELD if you're traveling within 150 miles. If you're over that amount, 
you have to use the ELD, but you do have to have a logbook. You have to log your hours. The hours are logged, yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I found out. You do not have to have it if it's it's with that local type of work. You don't have an ELD like strapped to you every time you move. And that's a that to me, that's a pro. You know, it's almost like you you drive you you're driving a pickup truck. You know, and you're just driving and going where you have to go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Na that's all I can think of right now. Na okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So me and you, uh, spoke in the background, uh, about, uh, owner operators in these, uh, down in the oil fields and you feel, uh -huh. and you feel that some of these owner operators take advantage of you guys. Have you, have you ever known as have you ever known of of owner operators not treating their drivers right or not getting paid or anything like that for this young lady to know that she needs to really do her homework as far as who to get with? Yes, yeah, she does. A lot of um I've I've spoken to some um some um drivers and that with the owner operator, with not with a working for an owner operator, not a carrier, but an owner operator who may be leased under a carrier, that is where some people are having issues when the when the economy, you know, gets bad or when you know they're um, having issues with being paid, you know, pay payment being late, and I think that's across the board in trucking. I just saw a post on Facebook about that, and so like being paid on time um and also being charged for for um blowouts on tri on tires um things that they feel should be preventable and even 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 the some carers probably do it too I'm not sure but things that they see that's that's preventable you you personally the driver will get charged for it so it come it'll come out your check so you got to be leery of that because you're dealing with the South and you're dealing with, uh, um, you know, some drop, some owner ops, you know, maybe have a lower budget than others and they will, um, you know, anything that the driver does to maybe not do the proper pre-trip and there's something breaks or something that could have been avoided. They will charge you. It depends on it's case by case. You know, but that's something for for the her to look out for for anyone that wants to drive. If you don't have enough experience, or you know, is it, is definitely that's definitely a thing to do. Okay, definitely look at them, see, and ask the ask the owner operator how are you paid? How do you you know when when because it's weekly. They are they a lot of the places um, payroll starts on Sunday. Sunday at uh twelve fifty nine a.m. I mean, uh, yeah, Sunday at twelve at um, um, not twelve fifty eleven fifty nine. I mean, twelve oh one or twelve twelve a.m. is when the payroll starts, and it ends Saturday at eleven fifty nine. So you can run. Just think that whole seven days, you can run back and forth to those sand plants, however many times you know the it would you. Are allowed to, you know. There's no limit. Nobody is capping you on, you know, um, when you're running or you know, like that. You know, nobody's capping it because there's since there's a waiting, a waiting portion of this. The waiting portion of this, you're on duty, but you're off if you're waiting four and five hours for um, for loads. Basically, if you're you're waiting for loads. So you may not, you may drive only, you know, um, a total of four hours running back and forth from sand plant to well. But you've been, you may have been there like 15 to 20 hours. Okay. So, I mean, if you want, if you, if a person that has homework, has another hobby, something they're doing online, that'd be great for you because you can sit and these are at the wells that are not, um, you know, that are slow, I should say. 
they have different types of whales. They have um, um, stack frack whales and they have uh, zipper whales. And the zipper whales are much larger. They have like three pumps on them. So they pump in the, the, or whatever they pump it down there, the H2S gas, oil. It's in three, three different, you know, pumps. So it's coming up faster. And, and they need more, you know, sand to do the work or more mud to do the work. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Okay, okay, all right. Um, okay, so uh, you suggest that uh, during the waiting phase, that if they do have something to entertain themselves, you say do that, right? Do that, yes, and get out your truck and walk around, exercise. All right, all right. <laughs> what what do you do do you get paid for the wait? Or how do you get paid? How, you mentioned uh you know the 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 week, you know, when it starts and when it ends. How I mean, what do you get paid? Do you get paid by the hour? Do you get paid by the by by the mile? Do you how how do you get paid? Okay, go. As an okay, as in a non-driver, you get paid by the load and the tons. The tons you are carrying. So if you're going to and, the, and it only counts from sand plant to whale. So whatever that mileage is, if it's 50 miles. There's a calculation they have, and it may be twenty twenty one dollars a ton. If it's I, I I was at one and I saw the numbers before. It was thirteen miles, and it was fifteen dollars and eighty nine cents a ton. A ton. I was carrying forty four tons, right? Because you're you're you are carrying a heavy load. You're carrying a full load every time you you do this work. You know, dry van, you can carry 10,000, whatever. This is always going to be 80,000. Your truck is, your full, your full weight is going to be 80,000 with the sandboxes. It's going to be 80,000. So you get weighed at, the, at an empty truck, then you get weighed at a full truck. And the difference is what you, your tear weight. It's called your tear weight, what you come in as, your 34,000 34, pounds, whatever it is. I mean, 34, yeah. Whatever, yeah, whatever you have there, that's your tear weight. And then your, your weight after you get, um, you get the sand in. That's the, 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 the last of the weight, yeah. So, so after you get, you get the sand in... That's what they measure all those tons. So if you had 13, if you got a calculator, I don't have one with me, but you have 13 miles to go. I had one where I had 13 miles to go. And on the, they have a chart that the, each company will give, give the owner operators a chart. And it said from these, this mileage to this mileage, 10 to 10 to 14 miles, your travel time is 10 to 14 miles. And, you know, 15 or whatever versus the tons. It's fifteen dollars and eighty nine cents a ton. So if you got forty four tons times fifteen, but the driver it depends on your you and your owner op. So I'm gonna give a hundred hundred with a twelve mile distance you do traveling. The driver they may give you a hundred dollars a load. You do four runs a night. You got four hundred dollars. So this during is, that night. So this is so the 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 put it all in a nutshell. Uh, it sounds as mm -hmm. though that the oil fields sound like a like a hustle game. Yes, it is. It's about how it's about getting to the staging pad and being there to wait in line. So that's where you see all the the things you've heard about people getting in accidents, killing themselves, doing this work. 
because it's all about being in line at the staging pad when they call you. Knowing the hustle game, knowing when it's slow, knowing when everybody tired of waiting, when everybody tired of waiting, they be like, get this, I'm going home with a rest. <laughs> and that's when you need to be working. When when everybody is resting, because you can get two to three runs in easy. And 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 it, it increases your um your bottom line at the end of the week. Yeah. So highly dangerous, highly lucrative for the yep. for the right person with the right mindset. Yes. Anonymous, everybody. Everything you probably need to know and more about the oil fields from this young lady. She only been down there for a little while, but uh, I, I think the information that she uh, give or gave to the young trucker that was asking for it, uh, asking for the information, uh, you know, that, that sounds pretty good. I mean... I, you know, just by listening to you, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I, me personally, I probably might stay away from the oil fields. I mean, I'm, I'm a hustler. I, I like to get out here. You I'll, could do I'll it. Run. Just give me the, <laughs> just give me the load, and I'll run it. But it just sounds as though, uh, it, it just sounds as though my it's hustle. It's a rest. Yeah, it, it, it's like a rat race, and I, I don't want to. I, I, I just feel like my safety. It's a little bit more for me than than coming down there to risk it. You know what I'm saying? I understand. I understand. But the thing is, is that, you know, when you go into the tough terrain, you know, it's slow. It's when you go into the tough terrain part, it's it's slow. They have speed limits on there. So you're you should be fine with that. You just gotta you just gotta see well and have good lights on your truck at night. And and follow the path of the hoses, you know. Don't get lost or anything like that. That's it. Where the accidents happen usually is on the main roads, not the back roads. Most of the accidents happen when somebody traveling to the sand plant or from going on the highway, going on, you know, driving so fast to get back there. It's not on the actual lease road unless there's some somebody who just ignoring the rules because they don't play with the rules. They kick you off the well if you don't follow them. I forgot to tell you all that, but yeah, they kick you off if you don't follow their rules. Yeah. Oh. You're banned from all wells. Yeah. So. All right. Anonymous. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for all the good information on, uh, on the oil fields. Um, you're welcome. So for for you, uh, for you to to run the oil fields and get the and get the uh, experience that that you you know run in the oil fields, can that experience uh -huh. be be then transferred <laughs> over to you know coming back over the road? Yes, because it is the oil field is considered over the road because you are it's considered over the road. All right. All right. It is, in, in the trucking world, it's considered over the road because you you will travel. You may, you know, some companies may want you to go to Texas. Some may want you to go to Oklahoma. So you do have to travel over the road going between wells, you know, or wherever the work is. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Okay. I was just saying, okay. And, uh, there are other aspects of it, of, of oil field that pay even more. So the part that we see every day is like, that's just the minimum that people can make as far as income. There are other aspects where you can make even more income. Drop shit and still make it look good. I get that. Only way I know it's going to 